beyond the historicization of the use of satellite for uh, communication, specifically uh, when both the state infrastructure or sort of the commercial infrastructure and the basic grids in place, telecommunication grids, can no longer provide the capacity for the distribution of information, um, nowadays we're starting to see novel usage. Um, and this novel usage uh, is typically in circumstances where um, where sort of the community is, is very far flung, uh, where um, the reinforcement is, is fairly minimal, uh, where transmitters are, are absent uh, or, um, or at least uh, scarce. Uh, and so basically the satellite technology used for, for basic communication, whether for internet or for phone services or, or otherwise, um, basically supplants uh, everything else. It's able to uh, effectively sort of conglomerize and bring together and consolidate all of the technology necessary to be able to create two-way communication uh, in the same sort of sophisticated way that we're accustomed to having in highly networked uh, sort of urban metropolises, but in areas that are uh, that are underserviced. So, um, when in the cases of humanitarian disasters and humanitarian relief, uh, when it comes to sort of NGOs and, and CSOs uh, in countries that are that tend to be underserviced or don't have an, a developed infrastructure, uh, let's say in the democratic Democratic Republic of Congo, where it's necessary for uh, information to travel from field offices to uh, central locations and also to distribute information internationally, um, especially when it comes to the you know uh, areas of, of humanitarian crisis. You know, so in the, in the case of the Congo, uh, the technology is being used to uh, to overcome what has become uh, sort of a pandemic of, of rape as a weapon of war. Uh, and women uh, who go out into the fields to seek sustenance, to look for, um, uh, to look for food, to, uh, to, to find fresh water, uh, in some cases find themselves uh, victims to, uh, to this, uh, this pandemic uh, process. Uh, and so in many instances, the, uh, some of the NGOs uh, in that area will provide uh, these satellite phones uh, that allow them to kind of bypass the absence uh, of any sort of built-in uh, telecommunication system uh, so they can communicate with uh, help centers or at least to report uh, an incident. So now we're, witne we're witnessing or at least uh, we're able to identify an increase in the number of reports of, of these incidents and of course it can improve law enforcement and things of that kind. Uh, the same goes with um, areas where activism and dissidents, uh, political dissidents, such as in Syria and, in, you know, in the early days uh, in, in uh, Libya, uh, when Benghazi was being targeted uh, quite extensively, there was the need to have some sort of technology, especially when the state itself decides to either uh, pull the plug on, uh, you, know, the, you know, the telecommunications uh, Infrastructure uh, and the circuitry is no longer functional. So there's a, there's a need for for bypassing or circumventing of that blockade. Uh, the same thing happened uh, in Egypt. Uh, of course, it was a very short-lived process, but during the 18 days of the uprising, uh, the Mubarak government decided that they would pull the plug on all telecommunications uh, for about 48 hours. Um, and, of course, the internet for uh, a good five days. And so during that period, there was a scramble to try and figure out what to do uh, to kind of deal with this, uh, you know, uh, instantaneously crippling uh, uh, phenomenon. Uh, in the case of Egypt, of course, uh, Mubarak realized that you know he was paying the price far, far more dearly by uh, by denying people access to to this technology than had he not. Um, and uh, and you know so he was able to rectify it quickly, but the damage had already been done. Uh, in countries like Syria, where the state is uh, far more systematically targeting. Uh, the, the technology and, and trying to sort of blockade it in every conceivable way. Uh, there's a need on the part of dissidents or activists or rebels or insurgents or various other groups or any clandestine sort of organization. Uh, there's a need for them to have um, sort of mobile satellite access that supplants the role of both uh, radio, television, uh, internet, and, and phone. So all of the technologies uh, can be sort of facilitated with these, uh, with these receivers, these dishes and receivers. Um, but then again, it, um, while you know the costs have been dwindling as the technology improves, uh, it's still not you know it's not peanuts, it's not crumbs on the table. It's still still fairly costly, uh, and so um, you know the 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 the. the 
the usage itself may have sort of gravitated away from sort of the uh, the militarized component or or uh, the intelligence gathering uh, component all the way to more sort of effectively civilian usage usage uh, that you know is is highly beneficial uh, especially in areas that uh, that need it the most uh, but uh, nevertheless I think there is still a little bit of a disconnect it'll be another probably you know half a decade you know at most before uh, this technology becomes so abundant and so easily accessible that even you know here in the United States where you know there are very few pockets that are underserviced when it comes to telecommunications but uh, instances where let's say in the mountains of Appalachia for instance where um, where typically it's very difficult to pick up phone service, where uh, you know cable companies are are unlikely to go, where some of this satellite technology might be extremely useful uh, and very beneficial to connect the community, uh, these communities not just with themselves on a very domestic and localized clustered level, but also regionally and perhaps nationally and perhaps even internationally, uh, that the plight of any given community is. Uh, is uh, is determined by their ability to communicate their qualms, their struggles, their livelihood, and and relaying their stories. So th the technology uh, is both uh, is both uh, sort of a, a historical sort of innovation, uh, but the innovation takes on completely different uh, livelihoods and and takes on a different sensibility, dependent on uh, on the need and as the need develops and shifts and transmogrifies over the years. Would you say that these devices or internet satellite is a game changer uh, in uh, dissident operations, in, in uh, underground activities, in non-liberal countries? Um, you know, there are a lot of game changers when it comes to those circumstances. I mean, one could argue, for instance, that the Internet was described as, as a game cha changer, as, as you might know, um, all this talk about the social media and, and the uprisings. Uh, there's also sort of the basic, you know, uh, mobile phone technology, which, of course, renders uh, every individual, every civi civilian, uh, a potential citizen journalist and a reporter and someone who's able to document and memorialize what's happening at any given uh, time. Um, so there, I think that it's 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 really sort of a, a capacity building aspect rather than uh, you know a winner takes all. So the emergence of satellite technology has been really si significant um, in many sort of authoritarian countries because it is a transnational technology, or at least it pushes towards transnationalism. So you cannot block. Uh, satellite signals, you know, so easily you cannot jam signals or scramble them so easily when you've got a, a, a receiver. So messages can cross borders um, against the will of uh, of the local power. So I think in in that sense, from the mid 1990s until today, we've come to understand that that satellite technology uh, is uh, is a major step towards shattering these very rigid barriers that separate uh, and divide uh, countries. Um, but I'm not sure um, I would I would necessarily call it a game changer. Now, of course, if it becomes so uh, so abundant uh, and new usages sort of come about, so that uh, it is no longer about the you know, or it's no longer sort of a focus of uh, centralized information dissemination, uh, and it becomes very disparate and, and very localized, then it could be game changing. And it would be game changing in on a variety of levels. It wouldn't necessarily have to be in in illiberal, you know, highly authoritarian, tyrannical governments, but even in liberal democratic governments. Uh, what does it do to, you know, community radio and, and local broadcasting and citizen journalism? I mean, uh, what, it, what would it do to the fact that we have, uh, you know, um, about four companies that run most of the radio stations here in the United States? You know, it would uh, really be a central, a decentralizing force if they become as, ab as abundant and uh, as, let's say, you know, cell phones and smartphones. Phones, et cetera, et cetera. So there is definitely a potential. Uh, game changing often depends not on the on whether or not the technology has the capacity to change, but whether or not people adopt it. Look at Betamax. Betamax may have been a very superior form compared to VHS, but because of its inability to build traction, it sort of you know got tossed to the wayside. Blu-ray, same thing is happening there. So um, I think uh, the usage will determine whether or not the satellite technology will live up to perhaps the lofty expectations set for it uh, and, uh, and perhaps even um, you know, the, the kind of uh, hopes that, uh, that people have of it. Now back to the transborder issue. In, in our research we mostly found that uh, it is deployed and managed by uh, 
NGOs and, and humanitarian organizations. Do you know anything about governmental involvement uh, from either side of either supporting and deploying it or from trying to prevent the, the use of it? Because I know that in most countries using satellite beams technologies is uh, under legislation in order to yes. be, have a permission to use it. Um, you know, for, for the most part, uh, typically NGOs um, are, are some of the few organizations that are given the right by, of course, the state, each of the, any of these respective states, uh, to, to use this kind of technology because they've been vetted uh, and they've been approved and they've been sort of given the, the license uh, to not only bring this technology into the country but also uh, to put it to use. And, of course, because satellite signals are detectable, uh, they're easily they're easy, they're easy to recognize and uh, and uh, if there's any illicit or sort of illegal use, uh, then uh, typically the government is able to target or regulate or control and confiscate equipment and things of that kind. Um, so it is you know up to the up to this point, uh, it is very much uh, you know a, a regulated um, a regulated technology in many countries. Uh, but of course, by virtue of its capacity and what it can do. Uh, it allows, you know, the the, the users to bypass uh, the government. Um, in many instances, the intention is to bypass, is to really is not only to to, to or not necessarily to violate uh, government control of uh, and the state control of of information and information dissemination, uh, but rather to present sort of an alternative narrative, alternative story, and an alternative. Um, sort of um, prism or, or perspective. Um, in the case of NGOs, there the functionality of the technology is predetermined. I mean, there is it's it's meant to improve and and increase the efficiency of their uh, the relationship between their field offices and their central offices, and to ensure rapid deployment if necessary when it comes to let's say humanitarian crisis or the or the provision of of humanitarian relief something, things of that sort. So um, that process is predefined. Uh, in, other, in instances where uh, the functionality is not entirely clear, that's when the legal provisions tend to be far more restrictive. Uh, and, uh, and I think to a large extent, or at least thus far, in most countries uh, around the world, uh, there is some sort of nebulous slash vague legislation that can be used uh, to to impinge on the distribution of the satellite technology to ensure that no foul play occurs. Now, of course, it assumes that foul play is the intention, uh, but uh, you know, and and so only organizations with the necessary paperwork, the necessary registration, uh, the kind of track record that would be deemed acceptable by you know each each and any of these uh, nation states will be allowed to uh, Im you know, import, receive, utilize, distribute messages using this technology. So you know, at the end of the day, we're, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it points out the fact that even though the technology might exist, even though the need and the functionality might exist as well, there are sort of supra-functional you know, conditions and structures and institutions that are there to ensure and to uh, to ensure the distribution and the regulation of usage uh, is one that doesn't in any way undermine uh, or or in, in any way question uh, the integrity of the nation state.